Every April, the golf world's fancy turns to Georgia and the Augusta National Golf Club. Welcome to the 1988 Masters. It's a Masters tradition that the first round of play is begun by honorary starters from golf's pantheon of legendary players. This year, an injury keeps Byron Nelson from actually playing. But Gene Sarazen and Sam Sneed give their usual stellar performances. In golf-hungry Japan, many consider the Masters as important as the Olympics. Naturally, the international character of the event is also reflected in its field of competitors, professionals, and amateurs. On this first day, Japan's Tommy Nakajima in somewhat blustery winds thrilled the gallery with a crisply struck short iron. The first foreign entrant to win the Masters, Gary Player, remains as competitive as ever, despite advancing years, not evident in his appearance. So nearly there at 15. But at 18, that old magic returns. Alas, player was to miss the cut, but by only two strokes, in this his 31st consecutive Masters. This year's event plays host to golfers from 11 nations, including the United States. Australia's Greg Norman, loser to Larry Mize in last year's playoff, was eager to redeem himself. He swung well from the outset, but not well enough. He opened with a 77, but he would be heard from later loud and clear. The youngest player to win a Masters, Spain's Seve Ballesteros once again puts on display his athleticism and intensity. An opening 73 would not be far off the early pace. Germany's Bernhard Langer, a past Masters champion too, was as always a serious contender from the outset. He rolled to a first round, 71. Scotland's Sandy Lyle, having already won twice on the 1988 United States PGA Tour, was clearly continuing to excel. His deft touch helped him to a first round, 71. That's one under par. However, another European coming off a run of outstanding golf, Welshman Ian Woosnam, had difficulties not uncommon to first-time Masters participants. Still rolling, oh my, it just won't stop. His tee shot dunked into the water, his second found the fringe, and his third sliding over a green tabletop slick. Woosnam is to open with an 81, a disappointing Masters baptism for the Welshman. And the home contenders? Well, who better to lead them into the fray than four-time champion Arnold Palmer, who clearly has not forgotten how to deal with the sands of Augusta National. Twice winner here, Tom Watson is more than a sentimental favorite. After struggling through a few seasons of winless golf, he had given indication he was once again on his formidable stick. He wears two coveted green jackets, a great shot in gusting winds with a breeze at his back. Watson right on the flagstick. A first round 72 augured well for his chances. But it would be another American veteran rediscovering his best skills who stepped farthest forward in Thursday's opening round, the 1987 U.S. PGA champion, Larry Nelson. An opening three under par 69 would give him the lead until Masters newcomer Robert Wren finishes his round. This for a birdie three at 18. Yes, and Robert Wren in his very first Masters can celebrate tonight with a three under 69. He said this morning, just don't go out and shoot 100. He didn't. He's tied for the lead on a very difficult day for scoring. So to Friday. Curtis Strange, recovering from an opening round 76 in the most exhilarating way. This hole in one at the 12th, the 11th ace in Masters history. But Woosnam's Masters is over. I'm going home now. You, you don't yeah. Although seven strokes better the second day, 81-74 ends his first sojourn at Augusta National. Now, 
Let's join the leaders at the first. The pressure of playing at Augusta. In his very first Masters, the first round co-leader, Robert Wren, bunkered his second shot on the very first hole. Nicely done, and this all that remains for Wren's par. The other first round co-leader, Larry Nelson, a 22-footer to wrestle the lead from Wren. This will break off sharply from his right to his left. The momentary lead for Nelson. Wren would save his par, but Larry's moment of glory was over, for he was to shoot nine bogeys en route to a 78, from which he would never recover. At the par three fourth, Bernhard Longer illustrates the expertise of a skilled Masters performer, playing the undulations of the Augusta National Course. A nice carom right toward the hole, it kicks dead left. And a good birdie opportunity for the 85 Masters champion. His playing companion on the day, Mark Kalkovecchia, needs this 12-foot putt for his par. It's fairly straight. Yeah. Nicely done for the Masters sophomore. He stays at one under par. Now Langer's birdie try. One over par so far on the day. Yes, a birdie two. And the third foreign winner at Augusta, the West German, back as he started, one under par. With early birdies, Tom Watson mounted a second round charge, but a bogey at seven slowed him down. And despite this excellent approach to the ninth, he fails to make the putt. Still, he remains in contention through 27 holes at minus one. Jack Nicholas would not have an especially good Masters. Although striking the ball well from tee to green, his work on the putting surfaces proves not nearly so effective. No, Jack, no. Sandy Lyle, on the other hand, despite a bogey at the first, has made significant progress. With Wren slipping back, three birdies move the Scott into the lead. At three under par, He's the picture of a man in total control of his emotions and very sure of his game. Further proof of this comes at the night. After yet another splendid approach, he has this birdie putt to move further ahead. So four under now, and with a Scott out in front, the international flavor of the Masters is re-emphasized. Volvemos al hoyo número 10, el líder Sandy Lyle. With Spain among 30 countries taking the telecast, Ballesteros gave them plenty to thrill over. And with his brother displaying his emotional fire for all to see. Moments later, sustaining his determination and high energy, Seve struck a huge iron to the par 515 that would not go unnoticed in Britain. That's a good shot from Ballesteros. The Japanese were keeping a close eye on one of their favorite sons, Iseo Aoki, who satisfied everyone with another example of his skill. That birdie at 17 would help Aoki make the 36-hole cut. And Bernhard Langer gave his West German followers something to shout about, too, with this eagle at 13. Wunderbar indeed. But to be sure, the Americans were being heard from too. At 16, Zeller in the process of firing the best round of the day. Fuzzy, the 79 Masters champion, he's got it right on the flagstick at 16. Oh, great shot. Zeller will score 66, 10 shots better than his first round. Gary Hallberg was finding his form too. He'll finish two under for the day. Don Pooley is beginning to make his presence felt. He's had an up and down round so far, but a superb second shot and a birdie try. At the par five 15th, Mark Kalkovecchia 
has a chance to go three under par for the tournament. The young Floridians playing with increasing self-assurance, but it's not all roses for the Americans. At 16, the second shot of Robert Wren. He's dropped one shot to par so far today. He'll finish with a 75 and will feature no more, but he'll remember his first Masters. Ahead at 18, Sandy Lyle. The Scotsman, six under par, but as you see, Lyle right by that sprinkler head for this, his second shot to the par four, 405-yard finishing hole. Don Pooley, though, first to play. Even par, six shots off the lead to the finishing hole. And a great shot, just seven feet from the flagstick. Lyle watching, ready to hit his second shot. A three-shot lead as he nurses that advantage after birdies at 13 and 15. Way on the back edge, not where he wants to be. Meanwhile, back at 17, Mark Kalkovecchia with a chance to close in on Lyle. This for a birdie three. There it is, four under par, just two shots off the lead. At 18, Lyle has heard the applause from 17. He knows his lead is shrinking. Treacherous downhill chip shot through the long shadows and beyond the flagstick. He'll have that coming back to salvage his par. Last week's winner at Greensboro needs this for a par four at 18 and a round of five under 67. There it is, Sandy Lyle, the leader after 36 holes at six under and a nice save. And now Don Pooley's putt for a birdie and a round of 72. Back-to-back -back birdies to finish up, but he's five shots off Sandy Lyle's lead. So the leaderboard after 36 holes, the Scotsman, Sandy Lyle, nursing a two-shot spread over Mark Kalkovecchia. Another destined for a good day, Bernhard Longer, bunkered here at two. The ball puts on the brakes, and the West German's playing companion, Hubert Green, puts on the show. What's this? He's trying to collect caddy fees, carrying his bag to the third tee. No laughter from our leader, however, at number two, Sandy Lyle. Very little green to work with, still six under par. Actually hits into the crown and the grass and trickles on down to the putting surface. That for a birdie at number two. <laughs> Playing along with Lyle, Mark Kalkovecchia out of the bunker. And a certain birdie at the par five second hole for Kalkovecchia. He'll go to five under par. Trying to maintain his two shot margin at number two, Sandy Lyle needs this for a birdie. Still two shots ahead as he and Kalkovecchia go head to head. At the par four seventh, Fuzzy Zeller must birdie if he's to recoup an earlier drop shot. With a silken touch, he solves the problem. He was now back to two under par. His overnight concerns clearly not affecting his touch. At the 18th hole, among the early third round finishers, Jack Nicholas, a master of masters six-time winner of this great tournament and one of them the most emotional moment in golf history he began the day at four over par and was even for the day as he played this seven iron approach to the 18th jack was looking forward to his first under par round but it was clear he would not challenge for the title this year but here's someone who might the 82 masters champion craig stadler two over par at the moment his third shot from ray's creek a watering hole that has cost many men a shot at the coveted green jacket. And 
That's all that remains for a birdie at the par five, 465 yard, 13th for Stadler. Two over par. This putt to go one over par. Safely in, Craig Stadler, not among the front runners now, but if he continues to play like this, who knows? At the par four, 400 yards, 17th, the second shot of Ben Crenshaw. Thirty-five feet from a birdie, Crenshaw trails by five. Ben with rounds of 72 on Thursday, a 73 yesterday, and one of the game's premier putters. Crenshaw with a birdie three at 17. He's now four off the lead, and watch out, everybody. Gentle Ben back in town. But that's still four strokes adrift to the leader, Sandy Lyle, who has this for a birdie four at the eighth to move further ahead. His touch remains golden, minus eight now, and four clear of his nearest rival, Mark Kalkovecchia. And that's how it is as they come to Augusta National's treacherous 13th hole. The final bend around Amen Corner, the par five 13th. And right away, Lyle doesn't like it. Get over or get in or whatever. And there's why. Finding the woods and perhaps the water on the left-hand side. The 13th only measures 465 yards, but it's a very demanding par 5. Lyle in trouble on the left, and Kalkovecchia knows it. He trails by four. Kalkovecchia has found no problem at all. Lyle in trouble at the 13th. Meanwhile, up ahead on this par 5 13th, up on the putting surface, Fuzzy Zeller, a former Masters champion for a birdie. And Fuzzy's in at four under. The 79 champion very much in contention. Back down the 13th, Lyle's fear is confirmed. His overzealous tee shot would result in a bogey to Kalkovecchia's par. Elsewhere, Longer was proving he could handle the role at Augusta National. Almost perfect. A remarkable shot. Longer's heading for a 71 and two under for the tournament. Stadler at 17 has an almost identical putt to Crenshaw's earlier. With the same result. A round of 70 will put him one under overnight, and that after an opening round of 76. In the fairway at 18, Ben Crenshaw, his second shot. He's three under for the tournament, four under on his round today. That's all that remains for the 84 Masters champion and yet another birdie on a fine round on Saturday. As Crenshaw marches up the 18th, consider Tom Watson's dilemma. Over the last couple of years, his major problem has been his putting. It's no different this year. Watson struggling. He missed his bogey try. This coming back for a double bogey. And the man that won here at Augusta in 77 and again in 81 is still not through on this the par 3 16th. Three putting from three feet Tom Watson effectively takes himself out of this tournament. Crenshaw effectively has been getting back in hole by hole a birdie try for a five under 67. It's the best round of the day, four under for the tournament. Crenshaw with rounds of 72, 73, and 67, mounting a charge. Following Crenshaw to the 18th, Seve Ballesteros. Things going well today until a double bogey six out at number 11. Ballesteros currently at even par.
right on the flagstick, just shy of the second tier. And on these slick greens, rolling back toward the flagstick, a birdie try for the Spaniard who first won at Augusta in 1980. He won again in 83. And, of course, he tied for second last year. One of the most charismatic figures in all of golf can get back into contention with a birdie here at 18. Downhill speed putt for Ballesteros. This to go one under par and a round of 70 today. Still emotional, still a real threat. So what about the final pairing? After shifting fortunes, Lyle is four ahead again, but that lead's about to shrink. Kalkovecchia's second shot to the par 5, 15th. This a four iron. The fairway very tight down the left-hand side. There's water in front, over 200 yards of carry to the green. Kalkovecki has done it to within 12 feet of the flagstick and a real eagle opportunity. Suddenly, the Scotsman looks vulnerable. On a hole he'd hoped to at least birdie, he records a par. Now, Kalkovecki. From 12 feet away, Mark Kalkovecki, an eagle opportunity at 15 to close to within two shots of Sandy Lyle. And the roar erupts amidst Augusta's pines. With three holes left in today's third round, Sandy Lyle's lead sliced in half. At the 16th, the Britons in trouble again. Oh, Sandy, in danger of losing yet another shot. Which he does. Lyle, just one ahead now. But then at 17, some relief, as Kalkovecchia finds sand with his tee shot. A bogey five will put him two back of Lyle again. Meantime, slipping quietly into contention at two under par, Fred Couples. He is to tie for fourth place after 54 holes with Longer and Fuzzy Zeller. Zeller's dissatisfaction with the greens does not seem to hamper his style on the course. Fuzzy Zeller from the second tier at 18 barely strokes the ball in the finishing hole. Rolling, rolling, and as they've done all week, so slick, just barely beyond the hole. Zeller opened up with a 76 Thursday, a 66 yesterday, acting more like he shot an 86 as he suddenly became the master's blaster. Taps in for an even par 72, two under par for the tournament, and the 79 Masters champion still in the hunt with one round to go. Mark Kalkovecchia, his second shot to the 18th. He's had an up and down round today, despite that eagle out at 15. He trails by two. Good looking second shot. Up onto the second tier at the home hole, but watch, it won't stay there very long. Back in the fairway watching our leader, Sandy Lyle, six under par, a two shot lead over Kalkovecchia with whom he's paired. Sandy's had some problems on the backside, the lead slipping away, and the ball slips off the putting surface. A nice round of applause for the Scotsman. A Scot, by the way, has never won here at Augusta. Huge galleries on this third day. Lyle will be first to putt. He's not thinking birdie. He's thinking only get down in two and not let another stroke slip away. Three feet past, and that coming back for his par. Kalkovecchia now with a birdie try to close to within one. This from 23 feet away. Just a tap-in is all that remains for Kalkovecchia for an even par 72 this day after opening up with a 71 on Thursday and a 69 yesterday. So Kalkovecchia in the clubhouse at four under par with 18 holes left to go. Our leader, Sandy Lyle, yet another knee knocker on his third round. This to stay two in front. 
safely in for his par at 18 and a par round of 72. After opening up with a 71 on Thursday and a 67 yesterday, the Scotsman leads by two with one round to go. Sandy Lyle, who says the 15th club in his bag is patience. He'll need it as you check the leaderboard. Crenshaw, Zeller, and Langer have all won at Augusta before. Sunday. As dawn unfolds, anticipation hangs high. Could a Briton, nay a Scot, from the very home of golf, take the top prize in the game for the first time in 52 years of Masters history? In 18 holes, we'll know the answer. But there are many in contention. Greg Norman for one. Among the early starters at three over par, Norman builds up a great head of steam. This putt at nine would give him his sixth birdie of the day. And a total of 30 on the front nine. Golf's white shark is on a feeding frenzy of birdies. Don Pooley is another making a claim. After an opening trio of birdies, he's four under par. Cal Cavecchia, today paired with Longer, birdies a second. Five under. But what of the leader? Standing in the second fairway, Sandy Lyles heard the roar and knows that Cal Cavecchia is closed to within just one. This, his second shot on the par five. Just on the back edge for our leader and a real eagle opportunity. Ben Crenshaw, three under par after a bogey on the first hole. His third shot, he had some trouble off the tee, but Crenshaw throws it right at the flag stick and has a legitimate shot at a birdie at number two. Sandy Lyle, six under par. This for an eagle three at the par five second. A big bend right to left, and he'll tap in for a nice birdie to go back to seven under, and again, his lead is up to two shots. Crenshaw, the 84 Masters champion, knows these greens well. This a birdie opportunity sliding left to right, and Crenshaw's got it. He's back to four under par, which is where he started off the day, but he trails by three. Far ahead at 13, Greg Norman holding on to his formidable game. The Australian is now seven under for the day, two under for the tournament. It was becoming evident the players had adjusted to the speed of the greens. Longer kept Germany's hopes alive. Still two under after a shaky start. Craig Stadler, the giant Californian, one under overnight. Now three under and soon five under par. Don Pooley from Arizona, despite setbacks at four and six, recovers brilliantly. Four under again. Mark Kalkovecchia will reach the turn in 36. Also minus four. At the third, Crenshaw chips in to move five under. And not to be outdone, the leader, Sandy Lyle, this at the fourth. Another birdie, and he's eight under. But as we rejoin the action, he's seven under, playing the ninth. Sandy Lyle's second shot to the par four ninth. A very treacherous green that slopes from back to front. Lyle, two ahead of Stadler, three in front of Kalkovecchia. From almost a dead stop, the ball gathers momentum and continues to roll backwards and backwards and backwards and finally comes to rest just three feet from the flag. Lyle, our leader, with a birdie try at number nine. Ben Crenshaw now, three under par, four behind Lyle's lead. Just off the putting surface, short with his second shot. Oh. 
And oh my, how much closer can you come? Even Ben can't believe it. Lyle needs this birdie to go eight under par and safely in at the turn. Three out of the rest of the field, but Augusta Nationals infamous back nine lies ahead. Number 11 at Augusta starts the famed Amen Corner, where many a Masters has been won or lost. Mark Kalkovecchia's second shot to the par four, 455-yard 11th hole. Pin high and a birdie try for Kalkovecchia, who had mixed fortunes early on the day, but a fine second shot here at 11. Bernard Langer is three under par, but the man of the moment Mark Kalkovecchia. He needs this to go five under par and close to within three shots of Sandy Lyle. There it is, a birdie beginning amen corner for Mark Kalkovecchia. He's five under and trails by just three. Greg Norman was continuing his madcap chase for the green jacket. He was three under for the tournament as he chipped his third shot to the 17th. A game of inches. At 18, he bunkered his approach, but once again displayed his all-around talent. So a 64 for the Australian, one off the course record and the lowest round of the 1988 Masters. Six holes back, the often treacherous short 12th hole confronts the leader, Sandy Lyle, and this after he dropped a shot at the 11th. What's going through his mind after that bogey at 11? I wonder. Lyle trying to get fancy with an 8-iron here at number 12. And more disaster on this second hole of Amen Corner. The water has grabbed Lyle's ball. Seven under par, a two-shot lead over Kalkovecchia, three in front of Stadler, but he'll be hitting his third shot to the par three. He elects to take a rather long drop and give himself perhaps a better shot, a better angle coming into the flagstick. The saga of Sandy Lyle at 12 continues on the backside as he strides over the bridge covering Ray's Creek. Lyle will be hitting his fourth shot to the par three. His lead slipping away around Amen Corner. Downhill and the water awaits. Perhaps for a second time. That putt remains then for a double bogey at number 12 for Sandy Lyle, the 12th over Ray's Creek. The scene of so many collapses at Augusta National and the start of so many great finishes. Hello, double bogey. Hello, meanest hole in golf. Lyle around Amen Corner has gone bogey, double bogey. Kalkovecchia with a birdie at number 11. A four-shot swing, and suddenly Kalkovecchia and Lyle are tied for the lead, both ahead of Stadler by one who's on the 14th. The par four, 405 yards. And the man affectionately called the walrus, Craig Stadler, who dropped a shot at 13, would like to tuck it in close to the flagstick at 14 and put on a birdie barrage of his own. At 13, the par five, 465 yards, reachable this day in two. <laughs> Encouraging his own iron shot vocally, Kalkovecchia, an outside chance at an eagle on the putting surface in two. Meanwhile, still definitely in the hunt, the 1985 Masters champion, West German Bernard Langer, three under par. And he's reached the par five and two as well. He'll have likewise an eagle opportunity. Langer stalking the leaders. Meanwhile, ahead at 14, Craig Stadler, another former winner at Augusta. This for a birdie. And this for a three-way tie with Kalkovecchia and Lyle. There it is on a Sunday at Augusta. There's simply no substitute for experience.
but the drama is far from through. At 13, after missing his eagle try, Longer with a birdie to go four under and trail by just one. And his playing companion, Mark Kalkovecchia, likewise missed his eagle opportunity, but this short birdie putt for the lead all by himself. Oh, 360 degrees in the side door, perhaps. But ah, yes, that's the smile of a leader. Yes, you got away with that one, Mark. But now, you're the hunted. Stadler and Lyle, the hunters. At the 13th, Lyle could only manage a par. The holes are running out. To 16, always a pivotal hole here at the Masters. This is Doug Toole's tee shot. Warming things up, you might say, for the fray to come. A closer contender, Don Pooley, has this for a two. He'll finish three under for the tournament, his best ever showing at Augusta National. At the 15th, Craig Stadler's eagle attempt will just fail. Still a birdie ties him again for the lead with Mark Kalkovecchia, who pars the same hole. Both six under par. It's coming down to the wire with Sandy Lyle having to play catch up golf. Sandy negotiates par at 14, then 15, where Crenshaw restakes his claim. Four under, just two off the pace. But longer is no more, after bogeys at 14, 15, and 16. His 1988 Masters run is over. Then Stadler falters two, a bogey at the short 16th and a wayward drive at the 17th. Takes the edge off his challenge. Much to ponder for Sandy Lyle back at the 16th. At the 16th tee, Ben Crenshaw, 170 yards on this par three. Crenshaw full under trails by two. And gentle Ben has found the bunker. Up and down, Ben. He'll have to if he's going to win his second green blazer. Sandy Lyle, one shot off the lead, five under par. Blankets the flagstick. And a legitimate birdie try for Lyle, who led after three rounds. Mark Kalkovecchia nursing that one shot lead. His second shot to the 17th. Flag high, but 22 feet away. Kalkovecchia leading Lyle by one. Crenshaw two in arrears, but he's bunkered back at 16. Crenshaw needs to tuck it tight. Ben begins to run out of holes. And almost. Lyle. A birdie try of 12 feet. This to draw dead even with Kalkovecchia with two holes left to play. Barely tapping the ball. This first share of the lead. He's got it. And we've got a tie with just two holes left. A rare sign of emotion as he double pumps six times. The man some pros call sleepy. He's been awakened here at Augusta. At 17, Mark Kalkovecchia has heard the cheers. He knows he's tied with Sandy Lyle. He missed his birdie try. This to salvage his par and stay at six under and stay tied with Sandy Lyle. At the 18th, Stadler records a par. 
for what would be for him, oddly enough, a disappointing 68 on the day. Ballesteros, by the way, finished level par. Stadler, five under for the tournament. Not enough. Still, a fine performance. So, back to the penultimate group, and Mark Kalkovecchia has driven picture perfect on the 18th hole. Mark Kalkovecchia, six under par, tied for the lead with Sandy Lyle. An iron to the well-trapped 18th green. Doesn't like it, and that's why. It rolls off the putting surface and a long, long way from the flagstick. It's been a long, emotional, and draining afternoon for Kalkovecchia as the lead has seesawed back and forth. At 17, the birdie try by Sandy Lyle. This for the lead all by himself. The Scotsman, remarkably, has regained his composure after disasters spelled around Amen Corner. Ben Crenshaw, a birdie at 17. They've been that close all day. Lyle to stay six under par, tied with Kalkovecchia, safely in. So Sandy Lyle strides off to the 18th tee. He's got one hole left to play, but Mark Kalkovecchia has run out of holes. This his third shot. If he sinks it, a birdie, and he leads by one. So tantalizingly close. So ends Mark Kalkovecchia's second Masters. A brilliant effort by a self-confident young man. His playing companion, Bernhard Langer, cards a 73 to finish at one under, thus leaving the stage for Kalkovecchia to sweat it out for the next few minutes. All the Floridian can do is wait and watch. His fate in the hands of the Scot. It all comes down to perhaps the most famous finishing hole in golf, the 18th at Augusta National. And for now, it's Sandy Lyle's tournament to win or to lose. Unhappy because it's headed right for the bunker. Look out, trapped at 18. What will happen to his share of the lead? Lyle waits and wonders. Crenshaw, former winner at the 18th tee. Pushes his drive way to the left. In fact, it clips the trees and caroms off way left into the gallery. Everyone, including Mark Kalkovecchia, wondering, will there be a playoff? Lyle bunkered at the 18th, tied for the lead at six under par. 143 yards away, the flagstick. Crenshaw will be first to hit. A bit of a flyer for Ben, and it kicks to the left. But the story is Sandy Lyle. He pulls out his 7-iron, the same club that set up birdies at 9 and 16. No player since Arnold Palmer in 1960 went to the 18th hole needing a birdie to win and made it. And there have been only three birdies all day long here at the 18th. Lyle practically ripping the cloth off the flagstick hits just shy of that second tier and the ball backs up rolling rolling ever closer closer to a birdie and a victory perhaps for Sandy Lyle win or lose Lyle will certainly remember this day for the rest of his career the entire Sunday attendance rings the 18th at Augusta National. Sandy Lyle tied for the lead with Mark Kalkovecchia, who waits about a seven iron away in the Bobby Jones cabin, wondering will there be a playoff. Lyle, who won last week at Greensboro. Nobody has won there and Augusta since Sam Sneed back in 1949.
Sandy Lyle against all odds. Crenshaw's third shot to the 18th. And that's all that remains for Crenshaw's par to finish up at four under. The 1984 Masters champion, he beat Tom Watson by two strokes. Crenshaw to finish at four under and good for fourth place. A round of even par 72 for Crenshaw. The stage is solo now for Sandy Lyle, a 10-footer to win the coveted green jacket. <laughs> Sandy Lyle, the 1988 Masters champion. Rounds of 71, 67, 72, and a 71, a 280 total, and a fantastic victory for the Scotsman. Back home in Britain, it's midnight, but millions remain glued to their TVs, sharing Lyle's famous victory along with Nick Faldo, Tony Jacklin, and Mum and Dad. Time, though, for a wee drum. Sandy, congratulations from all of us, from everybody watching back in Britain. There's the camera. I think you ought to apologise briefly for giving the whole of Britain heart failure today. Well, I wasn't the only one having a heart failure today. <laughs> I mean, I'm very sorry about it, people in back in Britain, but uh, <laughs> got the right result. That's the main thing. The right result indeed. Achieved with what was surely one of the most brilliant shots ever struck in a tournament rich with such events. Perhaps he was a trifle lucky that the ball came back as it did. But as Bob Jones himself once said, luck is nothing more than the residue of good works. Sandy Lyle, with his heritage and the roots of the royal and ancient game of golf, the first Scot, the first Briton ever to win the Masters Tournament. And so helped into the prize green jacket by defending champion Larry Mines, and with tournament chairman, Ford Harden, ready to present him his trophy, Sandy Lyle joins the list of champions. His name etched into the history of golf and the Masters for all time.